for my yo my marketplace today is uh, about a book i've been reading by bob coslin which is worship matters it has been uh, an amazing book but yeah there are a few things there that you don't want to hear but here we are being called out um so if you can go to my second slide i divided this into three parts um, i'm only going to do two because of my time so the first part is what is worship and the second part is the leader so that was the first segment of this um, book slide number three what is worship so google says worship means respectful devotion loving honoring and obeying a deity who deserves our highest regard the feeling or expression of reverence and adoration for a deity for us worship is being in absolute awe of god's sovereignty and total submission and obedience to his will once we fully understand the character of god we have a better understanding of who god is and he draws us to a place where worship is essential for us by doing this we remind ourselves of who the worship is directed to and understand that our worship does not minimize or increase god's sovereignty he deserves it he does not need it if anything we need it god is the foundation of worship the one we direct worship to so understanding who he is is very vital to worship there's a sermon by john piper um, glory of god and why we sing he describes the character of god by quoting exodus 3 verse 14 when god said to moses i am who i am and he said say this to the people of israel i am sent me god was speaking to moses when moses was asking how to respond to the doubtful israelites so god oh so let's we'll get into the power of the i am so i am means that god is there's no beginning there's no end and we see this in genesis 1 because god created the world from absolutely nothing in the beginning there was nothing but god and also in john 1 he provides a description of the beginning as well in the beginning was the word and the word was god meaning that the beginning is god he is the absolute reality my second slide which is a segment um so the leader so he then focuses on providing really great nuggets for leaders in church especially worship leaders now he starts with my heart what do i love discovering what matters in worship is a constant journey and a perfect place to be in for god to use us so there are multiple challenges that you can face as a leader from the song the band my beautiful vocalists <laughs> But that is not the greatest challenge. The greatest challenge is what you bring to the church every day. So what he says is that you can focus on the songs, the lyrics, and all the other things, but the most important or the greatest challenge is what I, as a, as a worship leader, bring to church every Sunday, which is my heart. We speak of worship wars, conflict over song selections, etc., but little has been said about the worship wars that go on inside of us. Each of us are raging a bat has a raging battle within us over what we love most, God or something else. Whenever we love and serve everything in place of God, we are engaging in idolatry. We love idols because we think they'll provide the joy that comes from God alone. We think having them will truly satisfy us and we think they are worthy of our worship. Throughout scripture, idolatry is the greatest snare the people of God encounter. God condemns idolatry in his words. He hates it when we pursue serve or are emotionally drawn to other gods which are not really gods they enslave us and put us to shame so as christians we are sometimes like the people described in second Kings 17 verse 33 they feared the lord but also served their own gods so we fear god externally doing all the right things on sunday morning singing strumming the guitar lifting our hands yet actively serve false gods throughout the week we profess we profess to love god the true God but actually love false gods it's a condition that God through his mercy is committed to changing the author also speaks about a time when he was experiencing anxiety depression hollowness and he actually had the desire to die he went to the um, psychologist psych um, psychiatrist and all of them could not really measure what was wrong this one time he attends a conference with his wife and has a conversation with the pastor then tells the pastor what he has been going through and then ends by saying uh pastor gary i don't know what's wrong with me i don't know what to do 
he thought the pastor would say, God is faithful, he'll be, don't worry. But then the pastor said to him, I don't think you're hopeless enough. He said that if you were really hopeless, you'd stop trusting in yourself and what you can do and trust in what um, Jesus accomplished for you on the cross. I'm sorry, Wookie. I'll, I'll be finished. Sorry. <laughs> uh, my mind. What do I believe? So I uh, have a little theory. Let's say we run into Starbucks and you tell me, listen, I met your brother, Jerry. He's a five foot um, six guy who plays the guitar. You describe him as having an avid interest in cooking Italian food and playing cricket. Then I give you a funny look and say, you must be thinking of someone else because Jerry is actually a six foot tall pianist who loves to eat, not cook Italian food. And though he excels in many sports, cricket is definitely not one of them. But you continue extolling a short guitar playing pasta cooking uh, cricket player as you repeat several times he's such a great guy such praise would be meaningless because it would be based on inadequate and inaccurate information your doctrine of jerry would be wrong and however strong your appreciation i think you would love him more after discovering what he's really like so it's like that with god god calls us not only to love him but to love the truth about him we worship the one who says he is the truth and who tells us the truth will set you free. God wants everyone to come to the knowledge of the truth and he reveals his wrath against those who suppress the truth. Jesus said that he would send the spirit of truth and he asked God to sanctify his disciples in truth, which he then identified as God's word. So the better and accurately we know God through his word, the more genuine our worship will be. In fact, the moment we veer from what the truth about God is, we're engaging in idolatry. Regardless of what we think or feel, there is no authentic worship of God without the right knowledge of God. In closing, my last slide is about theology and doctrine. Um, this part got to us, got to me. Um, he says, where do I find the right knowledge of God in the revealed truth of scripture? A worship leader who barely knows the Bible can't be a faithful worship leader. But how do we get our arms around everything the Bible says about God? It takes thoughtful, disciplined study and prayer. So that then introduces our two words that, come, that Christians are very uncomfortable with, theology and doctrine. Sadly, doctrine and theology rank so low on the popularity scale these days, but biblical worship is impossible without them. Theology means the study of God and it includes our concept of God as a result of this study or lack there. So every Christian, musical or otherwise, is already a theology. The question is, am I a good one or a bad one? We are good theologians if we say and think about, if what we say and think about God lines up to what scripture says and affirms. We are bad theologians if our view of God is vague, unbiblical, distorted or based on our own opinions. Doctrine means what is taught. Doctrine is everything the Bible teaches on a particular topic such as holiness, or the church, worship, or even spiritual gifts. Paul told Titus that a leader in the church must hold firm to the trustworthy word as taught so that they may be able to give instruction in sound doctrine and also those who contradict it. So the study of doctrine is not opposed to, to studying the Bible. It is studying the Bible. It is how we find what God is like, his attributes, what he wants us to believe, how he wants us to worship him. This means we need to be reading, we need to be studying, because we will be learning about God for the rest of our lives. The last part of that close is that we need help. Some people do not read um, theology books, books because they do not want the understanding of the Bible to be influenced by anyone else. So they'll say God could not possibly use another person to help me understand his word more clearly, which is ridiculous. <laughs> we need all the help we can get. Spurgeon reminds us, he who will not use the thoughts of other men's brain proves that he has no brain of his own. There are quite a few books that I found that could help, um, especially with theology and understanding God and what he has told us about himself and his word, such as Engaging with God by David Peterson, The Cross of Christ by John Stott, or Knowing God by J.I. Packer. We should take time not only to study scripture, but also learn from writers whose books challenge us challenge us and help us find the riches of God. So the question remains, are you a bad theologian or a good one? Thank you.